I've been collecting Warhammer collectibles for as long as I can remember, and me and my girlfriend, we fell into some really hard times. So I decided, hey, I'll sell some of my collection and I'll get us out of this pickle. But when I went to the storage unit to pick up some of my pieces, I found out that I don't own the unit anymore. And it gets so much worse because when my wife finds out, not only did I lose the entire collection, but when she finds out what the collection was worth, I'm gonna be in the dog pen. Let me know your thoughts on this story. I'll start from the beginning because I need your advice. Hey guys, it's Dale. I'm coming to you because I feel like my world is crumbling around me. I'm shaking as I type this, and my heart feels like it's been ripped out of my chest. You see, I've been collecting Warhammer miniatures and playing the game since I was darn near a kid. It's not just a hobby for me, it's a passion that's deeply ingrained in who I am. I've spent countless hours painting, assembling, battling with my armies. My collection is my pride and joy and it's taken me years to build it up to what it is today. But now, everything's gone to hell. My wife Avery and I have been struggling financially for a bit now. We're down to our last three months on our apartment lease and after that we were planning to move in with her father while I finished my plumbing license. I can't get approved for a decent place to live without a steady job, so we're trapped in this apartment and if we break the lease, my credit will be ruined and we'll be in an even worse situation. So I was desperate to come up with the $6,000 we needed to keep afloat. I'd exhausted every other option and the only thing I had left was my Warhammer collection. You see, I keep it in a storage unit because I didn't want Avery to know about it. I knew that I would have to sell some of it just to get us through this hard time, but the thought of parting with any of it made me sick to my stomach. But then I went to the storage facility. My world came crashing down. The manager, Rick, he waves me over and tells me that I missed too many payments and they're auctioning off my unit. I felt like I couldn't breathe. My hands were shaking and I could feel the panic rising in my chest. Rick said the auction winner would be coming to clean out the unit in the next 48 hours, and there was nothing that he could do about it. My entire life's work, the thing that brought me so much joy and meaning, was gone in an instant? I left the storage facility in a daze. I couldn't think straight. I found myself at a bar trying to drown myself in sorrows of alcohol. I drank until I could barely see straight, until the pain in my chest was numb by the whiskey. I don't remember much after that, but apparently the police had to escort me home. They were kind enough to realize I was going through something traumatic and just walked me back to my place. I woke up this morning with a splitting headache and a heart so heavy that I could barely breathe. I don't know what to do. I feel like I've lost a part of myself and I promised myself I would go back to the storage facility and see if there's any way to get my collection back. Or at least find out who has it now. I need closure. I'm terrified of what I might find out though, I mean, I don't know. I'm sorry for this post being so long, but I just needed to get this off my chest, I have nobody to talk to. I feel so alone and scared, and I don't know how I'm going to face Avery and tell her what happened, and I don't know how we're going to get through this. Uh, anyways, I guess I'll update you guys in a bit. Update number one. Hey, it's Dale again. I'm back with an update, and honestly, I just wish I had better news to share, but I feel like I'm drowning and I need to get this off my chest. So I woke up this morning feeling surprisingly okay. For a brief moment, I thought maybe things were starting to look up, but that feeling was short-lived. As soon as I stepped out of the bedroom, my wife Avery starts laying into me, nag after nag. Financial situation this and that. She spun on my case non-stop, treating me like I'm some deadbeat who isn't pulling his weight. She has no idea how much stress I'm under, how many sleepless nights I've had trying to figure out how to keep us afloat, and she kept asking about my collectibles, assuming I had more to sell. I just could not bring myself to tell her the truth, that I'd hidden my Warhammer collection in a storage unit and lost it all because I couldn't make the payment. She doesn't even know it existed. I was a nervous wreck, but I tried to keep it together. I lied to Avery. I told her I was heading out to apply for a new job. But in reality, I was going to the storage facility just to track down whoever bought my unit. I was desperate, hoping I could convince them just to give me back my collection. I begged. I stopped for a coffee on the way just to get my head right, trying to hold on to some shred of normalcy. 
but my hands were shaking so badly I could barely grip the cup. When I got to the storage place, I saw something that made my stomach drop. My best friend Jace's old station wagon. It's this vintage thing that he's poured a ton of money into restoring. I thought maybe he was just there to hit up the USPS office next door since he sells a lot of stuff online and would probably just be dropping off a package. Well, I didn't want to jump to any conclusion, you know. But then I walked inside and I saw him. Jace, the guy I've known for over a decade, the one who was just at my place last weekend for our regular poker night with the boys. I was so confused. I tried to play it cool, give him a nod and a fist bump, but he barely even looked at me. Uh, just mumbled a, oh, hey man, and walked away. I felt like I was in the twilight zone. I went up to the front desk and asked who bought my unit, and that's when I saw it. The name on the paperwork, it was Jace. He bought my unit, my entire Warhammer collection, for a measly $109? He knew exactly what was in there. He knew what it was worth because I always talked about my collection. He knew it was worth at least $30,000. And just took it out from underneath me. Well, I confronted him. Tried to explain how much I needed that collection, how desperate I was, and I even offered to pay him back any fees he incurred. I thought maybe he had just, would well, understand me, you know? We have a friendship, it would mean something, but you know what he said to me? He looked me dead in the eyes and said, Oh, sorry, bro. I know we're friends, but this is just business. Hey, man, I bought this unit, and by the looks of it, uh, there's a lot of merchandise in here. I'm sorry, but you're not getting this back, bro. Uh, see you at poker night next week, right? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Business? This was my best friend, uh, the guy I've trusted for years, and he was just brushing me off like I was nothing. I begged him, I pleaded with him to reconsider, but he would not budge. He even had the nerve to threaten to cut me off from our entire friend group if I kept pushing. Like our friendship meant nothing compared to a quick buck. I was devastated. I just kept saying, we've been friends for 11 years, man. How could you do this to me, to my family? But he just walked away and said I should have paid the bill. He even called security on me like I was some stranger causing a scene. I left the storage place in tears, feeling more alone than I've ever felt in my life. When I got home, Avery could tell me something was wrong. She started demanding answers and I couldn't take it anymore. I broke down. I couldn't keep it inside anymore. I had to tell her everything. Everything. How I hid the collection, how I lost it. So now that's where I'm at. I feel like my world is falling apart. My best friend stabbed me in the back and my wife is furious with me because she basically is saying I hid $30,000 from her and she's just looking at the monetary value. I know we were struggling, but come on, that was my lifetime collection. Um, I don't know how I'm going to keep a roof over our heads. I'm so lost. I don't know how to pick up the pieces. Guys, I'll try to post another update soon, but right now I'm just trying to keep my head above water. If anyone has any words of advice, please, I could really, really use them. What's up, everybody? I have an insane update. It came out six days after the first update, and let me just tell you, things are about to absolutely explode. If you think this story is bad so far and has some sad parts, well, you've seen nothing yet when you find out what his wife is up to. Don't forget to subscribe for daily revenge stories, and here is the second update, six days later, titled, My Best Friend Jace. Stole my entire collection of Warhammer, and I begged him not to. Hey, it's Dale. I wish I could say uh, things have taken a turn for the better since my last post, but the truth is my life has spiraled even further out of control. I feel like I'm trapped in a walking nightmare, and I don't know how to escape. So first off, Avery left me. Yeah, she hasn't filed like an official paper yet, but she packed a bag and went to stay with her mom. She gave me an ultimatum that's been ringing in my ears ever since. Either come up with the money to pay off the rest of our lease or our marriage is over. And just like that, as if it wasn't already reeling from the loss of my Warhammer collection, now I might lose my wife too? I was desperate. I broke down and told Avery everything. I mean, everything. I poured my heart out about my secret collection, about how much time and money I invested in it over the years, and I told her about Jace, how he swooped in and bought the storage unit right out from under me for a measly $109.
Uh, when he knew damn well it was worth over 30 grand. Avery knows this guy too. Hell, he was just at our place a few weeks ago drinking beers and laughing it up. Ah, uh, right before we went to the Taylor Swift concert. But here's the part that really kills me. Avery didn't even blame him. Not for a second, see. I was pouring my heart out explaining how I could sell off parts of the collection to solve our financial issues, and she just shut me down, called me a little boy. A little boy who needs to grow up and let go of childish hobbies. She said I should have sold it a long time ago when we first sniffed the first sign of trouble. I know I left my passion for Warhammer get out of control, but it was the only thing of value I had left. I thought maybe, just maybe, it could be our lifeline. But Avery wasn't having it, see. She tells me that she was sick of my crap, and then she was gone just like that. I was at my wit's end. I didn't know what else to do. So, in a moment of desperation, I decided to confront Jace face to face. I showed up at his place around 6pm, ready to demand my collection back, but the coward would not even come to the door. Instead, his sister answered and fed some line about how the storage unit was the biggest win that he's had in years, and he wasn't about to give it up. She actually had the audacity, the nerve, to say it was my fault for not paying the bill and that Jace bought it fair and square. Okay, like that makes it okay to steal your best friend's money? I'm not proud of what happened next, you see. A couple days later, I snapped. Straight up. I was consumed by this blind rage and desperation. I legit blanked. I couldn't think straight, and in the middle of the night, I actually broke into their home. I thought maybe I could steal my collection back while they were sleeping because I knew where he would keep it. It was so stupid, so reckless, and of course it blew up in my face. See, I got caught, we fought, and his sister called the police on me. Now, on top of everything, I'm looking at breaking and entering charges, and I'm in a tailspin. My wife's gone, my best friend betrayed me, and I'm legally in trouble. And I still have no idea how I'm going to scrape together the money for our lease, which, by the way... The clock's ticking. I feel like I'm drowning and there's no one left to throw me a lifeline. That's where I'm at. I'm reaching out here because I don't know where else to turn and these comments you give me give me hope. I'm desperate. Um, well, if anyone out there's been through something similar, I don't know. Let me know. I'll try to keep you updated if anything changes, but right now I'm just trying to keep my head above water. Until next time, Dale. Update. Two months later. My best friend Jace, well, I begged him not to. Hey guys, it's Dale. I know it's been a hot minute since my last update, and I apologize for leaving you all in the dark. The truth is, the past two months have been an absolute nightmare, well, from hell. And I'm still reeling from the absolute bapcrat insanity that my life has become, I swear. If you saw this story on a daytime talk show, you would think it was too far-fetched to be true. But here I am living it. Wait till you hear what went down. But first, let me rewind a bit. Remember how my wife Avery went to stay with her mom after the whole storage unit fiasco? Well, buckle up. I discovered that she's not just a liar, but a full-blown cheater. I caught her red-handed and the journey to get to that point. It's a nightmare, are you ready? I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Just when I thought I hit rock bottom, the universe says hold my beer and shows me a whole new level of despair. So here's the dealio. I was staring down the barrel of an eviction from my apartment. Yep, we're here. I couldn't scrape together enough money to keep a roof over my head, and Jace, the one who swiped my Warhammer collection out from under me, was ghosting me harder than Casper. I was at the end of my rope, feeling like the world was closing in on me, and in the moment of sheer, undulture desperation, I made quite possibly the stupidest decision of my entire life. I mean, we're talking hold my beer level of idiocracy. Picture this. I had a whopping $332 to my name, sitting right there in one of my crypto accounts. I also had five remaining pieces from my display collection of Warhammer collectibles. See, these were my babies. These were not in the storage unit. They were my pride and joy. But I needed the cash. I needed it yesterday. So with a heavy heart and a knot in my stomach, I sold them for a measly 2200 bucks. Oh, they're worth way over that. It was like a punch to the gut knowing I was letting them go for a fraction of their worth, but I had a plan. A ridiculous, asinine, crazy, toxic plan. So crazy, it might just work. 
I was going to take that $2,200, march into the casino resort in North Carolina next door, and win three blackjack hands in a row. I know, sounds like the rambling of a madman who's lost everything, but here's the thing. I've been playing blackjack on my phone during every bathroom break for the past few years, and in my desperation, I convinced myself that I had the skills to pull it off. So, with a white-knuckle grip on the steering wheel, literally, and a heart full of foolish hope, I made the drive. Three and a half hours. Guys, when I tell you what happened next was the most insane, heart-stopping, adrenaline-fueled wind streak of my life, I'm not even scratching the surface. The casino staff were so flabbergasted, they even snapped a picture of me. It just took four hands. Four hands to turn my life upside down. I bet it all. Every single time, $2,200. I bet on the first hand with a heart in my throat. And then I saw it hit 44. Uh, my palms were sweaty. I did it again. $8,800. I was having blood rush in my ears at this point, And finally, I hit $17,600 on the third hand. And my entire world was hanging in the balance. And just like that, I did it again. They told me not to, but hey, I did it, and I won. I hit 20, baby, and he hit 19. I walked away with $35,200, and I was shaking, laughing, crying, a manic mess of emotions, and after the second win, I had enough to wipe out the debts, but something just possessed me to keep going. It was like I was in a trance, watching myself from outside my body, and the dealer, bless his heart, even pulled me aside on the last big win and told me, hey man, take the money and run. Well, for once in my sorry life, I listened. I tipped in $500 and I got up out of there. I sat at the bar, nursing on a stiff drink, baby, letting the reality of my own win sink in as I'm holding the poker chips. For the first time in months, I felt a glimmer of hope. I couldn't wait to tell Avery, to see the look on her face when I tell her our troubles were over and we could start fresh. But when I came home the next day, that glimmer was snuffed out in the most brutal way imaginable. Avery was home all right, but she wasn't alone. There in our bed in the home that we shared for years was my best friend, that slimy jerk, the same one who stole my Warhammer collection, the guy I'd known since we were snot-nosed kids. I walked in on them, and he had the audacity, the unmitigated gall to scream at me. Oh, oh, the storage unit's yours. Oh, the debt settled. As he scrambled to find his clothes from the floor. I couldn't process what I was seeing, confusion, whatever, disgust. It was all inside me. And then it clicked. My wife, the woman I've loved for years, the person I trusted above all others, had slept with my best friend just to get the storage unit back. And he agreed to it, like it was some sort of twisted barter system. I know he had a crush on my wife, but come on, man. Don't you have any morals? I'm just devastated. I'm annihilated. It's betrayal. It's unlike anything I've ever experienced. I mean, the two people I trusted the most. The ones that I would have laid down my life for. They both plunged a dagger into my back and twisted it. So, here I am. Sitting on 35 grand that Avery doesn't know about, and a part of me, the anger, vindictive part, wants to keep it a secret. To divorce her, and leave her with nothing, and we don't have a prenup. Everything, legally speaking, is in my name. But the truth is, I'm lost, and I'm broken, and I'm a man shattered into a million pieces. I don't really know how to begin putting myself back together. I'll try to muster up the strength just for one more update. But right now, I'm reaching out to you guys, because this is it. I just need help one more time. I'll be back. If I can find the will to keep going. Thank you. Dale. Final update. Three months later. And if you thought it was crazy yet. Just wait. Hey guys it's Dale. I know you've been waiting for this final update. And I have to warn you it's a doozy. Um, the past three months have been a wild ride. And I'm still processing it all. But let's start with the storage unit fiasco. Remember how my backstabbing snake in the grass ex-best friend swooped in and bought my unit? My precious Warhammer collection. Well, I've got a bombshell for you. Turns out the storage facility seriously messed up. I had this nagging feeling in the back of my mind like something wasn't adding up. So I put on my detective hat and started digging through my old receipts and contracts. Lo and behold. Proof. 
I paid for a full 12 months on that unit, but those slimy weasels at the storage facility terminated my lease just after 11 months. I still had a whole 30 days left on the contract, and they ended it early without so much of a courtesy call? I was seeing red, my blood boiling with the injustice of it all. I didn't waste a second, I marched down to the storage facility with a fire in my belly and a lawsuit by my side. I was ready to race hell to make them rule the day they crossed Dale. They must have seen the determination in my eyes because they started backpedaling faster than a politician caught in a lie. They promised to reach out to the buyer of the unit and said if he didn't respond within 30 days, they would have to compensate me for the contents. Now, here's where the story takes a twist. A few years ago, when I first calculated the value of my Warhammer collection, the market was insane, all-time high thanks to COVID. Collectors were frothing at the mouth for rare pieces and prices were skyrocketing. So when the insurance company did their assessment of the unit's contents, they valued it at a staggering 68000 double what I thought it was worth. And guess what? The storage facility had no choice but to cut me a check for every last cent. Picture this. I'm sitting on 68 grand from the insurance payout, plus 35 grand I won during that heart-stopping blackjack streak in North Carolina. I'm feeling like the king of the world. Untouchable, invincible, whatever you want to say, and in a moment of what can only be described as pure, unfiltered pettiness. I decided to twist the knife in my cheating wife's back just a little bit more. I went to the bank. I withdrew $20,000 and told them to give me crisp bills only. And I fanned it in front of my wife like it was some kind of high roller fan. I even snapped a picture, a smug grin plastered across my face and sent it to Avery with a message that went something like, Hey babe, I hope you're enjoying that storage unit and your new boy toy. By the way, I hope you've been brushing up on your cardboard box decorating skills. I hear homelessness is the new rave. You see, Avery, bless her heart, doesn't have a single marketable skill to her name. No education, no job experience, nothing. She was relying on me to keep her in uh, the lifestyle she grew accustomed to. And she had the audacity to think that she was doing us a favor by, you know what, with my best called friend. Just to get the storage unit back, well, I've got news for her. The very thought of it makes my skin crawl, and she's made her bed, and now she can lie in it. She's going to be left high and dry, with nowhere to turn but her dear old mama's house. Or, I guess, my ex-best friend's love nest. Because I'm washing my hands of her, once and for all, and as for me, I'm taking a hundred grand that I have and starting fresh. I've had my eye on this charming little beach bungalow down in Tybee for a while. I'm gonna finish my plumbing license down there, and it's got a view of the ocean that'll take your breath away. I'm gonna march down there, slap down a down payment on the table, and start living life on my own terms. Avery and my ex-best friend can wallow in their own misery for all I care, and there you have it, the end of my sordid tale. I'm sitting here, a cocktail of emotion swirling in my gut, but I do want to know, um, if you were in my position, what would you do? Did I go too far? Or should I gave her another chance? Did she really think she was doing it for us? I don't know. And I don't care. Guys, there's so much going on with this story. I have to know your thoughts on it. I do want to mention how I kept seeing in the comment section how everyone was saying, you know what? I don't think there's a clear-cut loser of the story. I think everyone sucks. OP sucks from hiding all the collectibles from his girlfriend for that long, not telling her that he had it. I mean, yeah, I can understand how people would be upset about that, but at the same time, it's his collectibles. But since they were struggling financially, I can see how she would be upset. She didn't even know. And then, on her end, she goes out and does something insane, trying to get the unit back, and she says she did it for them? I don't think so. I don't know. I want to know your thoughts on this one because this was an absolute, well, crap show. Drop your thoughts down below. Let's talk about it, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.